Good day, folks. Everything new under the sun. Another update on the red heifer as things are moving more and more quickly now. So the idea of the red heifer is that they uh, need to uh, sacrifice the, the red heifer uh, so that they can get the ashes from the, this, this pure red heifer uh, for the Jews so they can purify the implements that uh, will be used at some point in the third temple. And where does the Bible say that there's going to be a third temple? Where it, Well, it says that the Antichrist in Daniel 29-27 says that uh, the sacrifices, uh, the, the Antichrist will cause the sacrifices to cease. Now the sacrifices have to happen in the third temple, the sacrifices for, uh, to pay for the sins in the, in, uh, in, in, in the Jewish religion, in their understanding of it, because of course they don't recognize Jesus Christ as um, the once and for all final sacrifice for the sin of mankind. So they want to implement the sacrifices again to pay uh, for their sins, uh, as they're not recognizing Jesus Christ. Well, that means that the temple has to be there because they can't sacrifice for their sins without a temple. So uh, the Antichrist will come in and, and, and cause the sacrifices uh, to cease, which uh, if you go track backwards means there must be a temple. And if there is a temple, that means they must have been able to purify the implements, which requires uh, in, in, in uh, the Jewish religion um, the ashes of the red heifer. So then you step backwards from that. Well, where are the ashes from the red heifer? Well, they're trying to come up with a red heifer. They don't have uh, ashes right now to purify those implements. So they're trying to grow them. And that's where we lead. And, and, and so the, the third temple uh, is suggested uh, uh, to have um, uh, to uh, uh, be being built. Uh, the idea is that it will be, be built, rather, at the start of the seven-year period when the Antichrist comes in, created, creates a peace deal with the many, and, and including Israel, uh, for a period of seven years, and the sacrifices then could start, at which point, in the midpoint of the seven-year period, he could sit on the throne in the third temple, declare himself to be God, and that then kicks off the wrath of God um, at the, at the uh, three-and-a-half-year mark uh, in there, uh, and, and that kicks off the day of the Lord, so the end of 6,000 years of man. Um, and so that, it, it may not be, um, you know, at the day of the Lord, uh, if, if he cleans up everything and the Lord comes back and, and his wrath falls at the start of the millennial reign of Christ, where he's kind of cleaning up the sin in the world to, uh, to set the stage for that millennial reign. Well, it could be that, you know, that that midpoint uh, basically straddles the 6,000 year mark. So it could mean we are <clears throat> still three and a half years out. Uh, from um, the start of the seven-year period, so something something to think about. And, you know, none of us know the timelines. Uh, it, we're all kind of speculating based on what we understand. Um, the Lord doesn't tell us. The Bible doesn't tell us. Jesus doesn't tell us. Jesus doesn't know. Only the Father in heaven knows uh, the date of the return of uh, Jesus. And so it could very well be that we are taken out, and I believe we are taken out before the wrath of God. And then when does the wrath of God start? Well, maybe the day of the Lord kicks that off. But anyways, the idea that the third temple must be rebuilt uh, is the key, and that's what we're looking at today. This is an interesting article out of allisrael.com, uh, and uh, the title of it is, A Red Heifer Sacrifice Could Take Place in One Year in Jerusalem. So what does this say? Huh. Plot of land on Mount Olives has been purchased and is ready for a valid sacrifice. What does Mount of Olives have to do with it? Um, the first since the destruction of the Third Temple. Well, there's a lot of significant things that happened on the Mount of Olives. But one of the big things is that um, Jesus was um, uh, taken up from the Mount of Olives. So after the crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus stood again. On the Mount of Olives, during his final post-resurrection appearance, Jesus led the disciples out of the vicinity of Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. So he was taken up into heaven from the Mount of Olives. So he, he leaves uh, the earth, Jesus does. Uh, the Holy Spirit is uh, left to be with us and in our hearts. Uh, and at one point, he will come back to the Mount of Olives, and it will be split in two. Immediately following Jesus' ascension, two angels told the disciples on the Mount of Olives that the same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you see him go to heaven. So he will come down uh, uh, again onto the Mount of Olives uh, uh, when he returns the second coming of Christ. So the Mount of Olives is obviously uh, significant, and there's a lot of other things that happen on the Mount, Mount of Olives. Um, of course, the sermon, um, etc., and uh, you can you can check out what happened, what else happens there. But let's go on and read about the red heifer. So they've uh, purchased some land on the Mount of Olives uh, to do the sacrifice. And this is what um, they are apparently looking for. The sacrifice of the red heifer could take place on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem as early as 
13 months from now. Texas businessman Brian Stinson, the man instrumental in locating and helping getting red heifers from Israel to, from United States to Israel, um, told All Israel News that finding the sacrifice ready cows was not the only objective. Uh, Bonnet Israel, the organization Stinson was involved with, has also purchased land on the Mount of Olives uh, that meets the requirements for the biblical sacrifice outside of the temple. Again, in order to have the temple, they need the, the ashes of the red heifer to purify the implements to be used in the temple for the sacrifices of the sin uh, of the Jews. Um, again, we don't need that. Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice, but they don't recognize Jesus Christ as um, the Savior. Uh, and so we see here, uh, Simpson explained that the sacrifice does not necessitate a new temple. What's interesting uh, about um, uh, this, again, is that uh, if it's 13 years out, indeed, um, then um, that could place um, the uh, beginning of the seven-year period uh, basically uh, near or around uh, that time. Uh, it says, uh, the red heifer does not mean you have to uh, immediately build. However, I think it's like a key that turns on uh, the engine. So again, very important Mount of Olives. Uh, again, interesting that they chose that spot to use that as uh, the place for the potential sacrifice. Um, so uh, it, it very, very, very fascinating uh, stuff that's happening. And again, it sets kind of a, a timeline that you can look at, kind of a high watch period. And if they don't find red heifer ashes, the, the, such a suggestion has been that, well, they'll find red heifer ashes maybe from you know, 2,000 years ago <clears throat> when they were sacrificing before in the temple, and that's possible, which means maybe they can uh, purify implements for the third temple even sooner. But um, that being said, um, this does set a timeline if these red heifers that, that he uh, is looking to use, um, uh, if he is looking to use these ones, then uh, or, or the Jews decide that they're going to use these particular red heifers that they found, um, then that could easily mean uh, that they, they uh, could potentially sacrifice it 13 months from now, according to him. Uh, and then uh, as soon as the ashes are there, then they can uh, start uh, um, sacrifices in the third temple, uh, which assumes that, you know, if, if they have this timeline, um, you would think that they would start building the temple in preparation uh, for this, um, for the red heifer ashes, for the purification of the implants. So the, the building could be there in place before the sacrifice of the red heifer occurs. So this is all uh, for the Jews. Um, they don't recognize Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, as the uh, pure sacrifice for sin of the world. And so they're still looking towards uh, and trying to move towards a third temple and the sacrifices. And so that's what we're looking at uh, today with the <clears throat> red heifer sacrifices that could take place in one year. Again, uh, possibly kicking off that seven-year period. We don't know when it's going to happen. Um, all I know is uh, things are ramping up in this world, and I don't think anybody can deny that things are moving uh, very, very fast at this point. Things will get worse and worse. The four horsemen of the apocalypse haven't even ridden yet. When they ride, you will know, and the whole world will know it. It will be plain as day. But I think everybody's starting to realize something is up in the world. There's a lot of things happening. War, natural events, uh, like the hurricane category four in, in Florida, etc., which uh, uh, made Fort Myers a complete, uh, just flattened it. Um, there's a lot of incredible things, and, and I think uh, it will only get worse. 2022 gets worse. 2023 gets worse as we go further into economic collapse. And so you need to be prepared. You need to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Uh, times will continue to get worse and worse. Um, the, the good life, you know, before 20, uh, 2019, uh, you know, the, where we were all living fat, dumb, and happy, and uh, just living our lives, uh, that, that will never come back at this point. Uh, we are in those very last days, folks. So you need to be prepared. And you can be excited about these things, too, because we know we will be going to heaven soon. So make sure you uh, bring as many as you can with you. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll leave it there. We'll